A warm welcome to my channel everybody. My name is Karen Saunders and I'm here to discuss all things Jehovah's Witnesses. Well today is no different and I want to bring to your attention the furtherance of how the governing body twist the scriptures about Jesus Christ. I came across Hebrews 1 and in context, it's basically talking about Jesus Christ becoming Almighty God's Son. And the question is asked by Paul under inspiration. The Son is superior to angels. And I'm just reading from the NIV version where the question is asked if we pick it up from verse 5. For which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. And then in verse eight, here is the difference. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. So here we see in verse eight. Where God says about his son, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. I picked up the same verse in the New World Translation, which I find very hard to stomach these days because of all the anomalies and the twisting of the scriptures and the fact that they can't even call their version of the Bible the Bible because it's so twisted and as a very good um XJW activist mentioned in one of her videos they would be sued because of the amount of twisting of scriptures but anyway we pick it up here in the New World Translation the same verse in verse 8 it says here in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 but about the son he says God is your throne Do you notice there that the difference is the New World Translation are trying to convey to its reader that God is saying to the Son that God is his throne. But in other translations, God is saying about his Son, your throne, O God, will last forever. So here we have... Almighty God referring to his own son as God and that his throne will last forever and yet the New World Translation in the same verse says but about the son he says God is your throne I find it absolutely unbelievable when again the New World Translation is the only translation that says this we could just take some um, other examples let's say for example the amplified version of the same scripture here we're looking at verse 8 okay but about the son in parenthesis the father says to him your throne O God is forever and ever so Jesus' own Father, Almighty God, refers to his Son as God. That's in the Amplified Version. Uh, let's go to the English Standard Version. Let's see what it says there. The same verse. Chapter 1 of Hebrews, verse 8. But of the Son he says, Your throne, O God... It's forever and ever. Okay. 
New World Translation. But about the sun, he says, God is your throne. I find it absolutely unbelievable, shocking and insulting to our Lord Jesus Christ that these members of the governing body, these so-called brothers of our Lord Jesus Christ, would twist the scripture to that degree. And as I've said in so many of the videos about, you know, this subject, these nine men have absolutely no compunction whatsoever to twist their version of the Holy Bible to suit their own needs, to suit their own ends, purely to deceive and lead astray all its followers, all its members. It's very serious business when you look at what Revelation 22 says about adding or taking away. And you could add to that twisting of scriptures, the scrolls of prophecy, and especially regarding Jesus Christ. You see, these nine men at the head of Watchtower Corporation know that they don't have God's backing and they don't have his son's backing, that they have the backing of their father, Satan, the devil. And so they have no problem. They have no problem hiding the truth from its members. And here's the thing. They know what the truth is about God and his son. Instead of leading their members, I'm not even going to say the amount now that are in the organisation because I don't believe that there's 8 million or so witnesses in the organisation anymore, not with the mass exodus that is taking place as I speak. They are leading these people to their eternal doom. And before our Lord returns, I honestly believe that the ones that are still in, rank and file Jehovah's Witnesses, the ones that still are in that need to wake up will wake up. And the ones that remain in there deserve to remain in there because they'd rather worship men than follow and do obeisance to Jesus Christ, our King. I just thought I'd do some research on some uh, verses that actually highlight um, scriptures that condemn people for twisting the truth about Jesus Christ. And so I just thought I would mention a few here. Uh, first, the first one is Second Peter three sixteen where he writes in the same way in all his letters and Peter speaks of everything as matters and his letters contain things that all of us um, need to be able to understand but which oftentimes are um, not understandable by people who are ignorant and people who are unstable and people who distort. And so they go along um, in following nine men who do exactly that to their own destruction. Galatians 1, 6 to 9 says, I am astonished that some of you are quickly deserting the one who you called to live in grace, in the grace of Christ, and you're turning away to a different gospel. Well, that's what Jehovah's Witnesses are doing in this particular verse in Hebrews, they're teaching a different gospel about the position of Jesus Christ and how his father views him. So it's no gospel at all, really. People are throwing you into confusion, Galatians carries on, and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. 
But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. John 1 John 4, 1-3 Here we see the Apostle saying, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognise the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is even now already in the world. Well, we'll stop right there. Um, every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh has come from God. That's another thing that Jehovah's Witnesses, governing body teach its, its followers, that Jesus Christ is not going to come in, in the flesh. That he's going to be, well, according to them, he's already invisibly present. So if he's already invisibly present, why is there still a governing body? If Jesus Christ returned in 1914, invisibly, why wasn't there a mass exodus of people caught up around the world to our Lord Jesus Christ? Nothing happened. No such thing took place. And so... What conclusion do we come to, but, uh, friends, that they do utter lies? Their spirit is from their father. And according to John, every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus Christ coming in the flesh has the spirit of the Antichrist. You cannot take that away from the, the scriptures. And yet these men, these nine men who were supposed to be Christ's anointed brothers on earth, go against every th single thing that the apostles say in terms of our Lord Jesus Christ. These scriptures that I've just read you, they warn against distorting or perverting the truth about Jesus and emphasise the importance of holding fast to the true gospel message. They have done nothing of the kind and they continue to lie and twist the scriptures. You know, we can think of another one at Revelation uh, chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. where it talks about the true vocation of the righteous children of God, their true vocation and where they will be with our Lord Jesus Christ. It says there in the um, English Standard Version, Revelation 5 verse 10, Worthy you are to take the scroll and to open its seals in reference to Jesus Christ. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And here's the point. And you made them, those that were ransomed, a kingdom and priest to our God. And they shall reign where? Not over, as the New World Translation states, but on the earth, or upon the earth which is taken from the original Greek, epi. Before I said goodbye to my friend and we parted company when I was speaking to her for the last time in person, I mentioned this scripture and I said the original Greek, epi, means on or upon. And she, she said, I've got the Greek interlinear here. Yes, yeah, it, it says on or upon, but what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Well, I never said anything. I just kept quiet about her response. 
but I have brought it to her attention in a message since. And I actually said to her, I never responded to you, but now I'm asking you if it's not such a big deal, if it wasn't such a big deal to have the word over in replace of on or upon, why didn't the governing body just put the original Greek in there in the first place? Because, you see, that would obliterate the two-class system. The Bible makes it very, very clear that the children of God, the ones brought from the earth, that are raised with Jesus Christ at his return, the ones that are resurrected and the ones that are caught up in that resurrection, and the ones that walked faithfully, in times gone past and fell asleep in death. Those three groups of children of God that are all resurrected will reign on the earth, upon the earth, not over from some heavenly place, but upon the earth. And doesn't it make sense, friends, that it would be the case because Jesus Christ is coming again in the flesh? Yes, our bodies will be glorified, but the ones that need to be resurrected onto the earth, they will see that arrangement. Jehovah's Witnesses um, convolute everything. They make everything so complex with groups here, groups there, those that are going to be resurrected, those that are not going to be resurrected. In fact, they have three resurrections with five groups. Jesus said of his true followers regarding scriptures and doctrinal matters, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. These men do not tell the truth. They lie and they deceive. And for true Christians, it is so painful because what we see is nine men masquerading as Christ's anointed brothers, never once leading its members to Christ, teaching them to reject the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, teaching its followers to disobey Jesus' command. And for that, they will pay dearly. All we can do is pray, pray, hope and pray that our friends and family that are still in this organisation wake up to the nefarious actions and dealings of these nine men that are just absolutely laughing their heads off behind these people's backs. It is serious business to twist and uh, mislead um, anyone, to twist and mislead people with telling lies about the scriptures, telling lies about Jesus's true identity and true position before his father. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. Who gave him the authority to be king and to be the begotten God, but his father? And yet, just these scriptures here in Hebrews, in the New World Translation, the governing body know what they're doing, but they milk everything down making out as though God is saying to Jesus that I am your throne instead of looking at the correct scriptures where God himself said about his son that he was God. So just, you know, when you think about it, isn't it? true that all of us who profess to be Christ followers really need to do research, need to spend time in the Bible, you know, need to spend time in prayer, 
need to spend time putting on the Christ in the best way that we can and acknowledging our failings and shortcomings and being honest about that and taking responsibility. Uh, we don't have to be doormats. Uh, Jesus certainly wasn't. And we need to look at the fact that these men will go as far as to say, as mentioned in 2 Corinthians 5.20, that they are actually the substitutes of, for Christ in replacement of Christ. Please tell me anybody where an imperfect human being, sinful human being, can make that claim and be a replacement for Christ. So until next time, my friends, thank you for listening. If you like my channel, please click like and subscribe and share to other people and get the message out there about the truth about this organisation. And until next time, please show kindness, show love. And if anybody offends or hurts you, always be quick to forgive, no matter what their response is or how they behave.